Greetings, my fellow earthlings. A very warm welcome to you all. So this is a Seiko Kinetic Arctura, which isn't working and is probably around a quarter of a century old. Gosh, I made that sound really ancient, didn't I? Okay, let's say 25 years. There, that's better. You're probably wondering why I've decided to restore this watch, even though it's not that battered. Well, when I was at uni back in the late 90s, early noughties, I had a housemate friend who purchased a Seiko Kinetic. And I was like, whoa, what is this Kinetic wizardry? And he was trying to explain it to me, but he didn't know exactly what it was himself. You couldn't just go and research stuff on your keyboard in those days, as the interweb and Alta Vista was still in its infancy. I mean, you could go on Napster and download a song, which usually took around two weeks to download, but that was about it. For everything else, you still had to buy a book or a magazine to get your information. So when recently this watch crossed my path, I recognised it instantly, as it was the exact same model he had purchased, and I thought, yeah, let's do this one for you today. Ooh. It's only after starting this restoration that I realised that this was the first ever Arctura, as this exact model is in the Seiko Design Museum, and it says it was released in 1997, which is around the era I was living off beans on toast. Whoa, look at that. <laughs> this watch is brand new. Look, still got its protective film on it. <laughs> Maybe not. So we can see all these cracks on this plastic. I'm gonna have a go repairing that actually. It's like an exoskeleton with soft underbelly, like a shrimp or a lobster. It's had some sort of third party intervention at some point in its life, but not for a long, long time by the looks of all this embedded dirt. I should be wearing gloves for this. Might catch something, might catch a lobster. Interesting screws. Moment of truth. Let's have a drum roll. Can you give us a drum roll? <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Okay. Have a gasket here. On a Swiss watch, you'd have a split stem, but here I can clearly see a little button there. Pass the crown out and the stem out. I'm going to lift this out gently. Seiko Time Corp. See Singapore. It's got some service marks in there by the looks of it. Ring here. Now, shall I keep this factory film for originality and collectability? Oh, this is so hard for me because I love peeling stuff. I want to peel it. <laughs> you want to peel it? Yeah. But I want to peel it. I want to peel it. Come on, then you peel it as well. I'll peel a little bit. Yeah, peel it. Oh, let me peel it. <laughs> You're not a good peeler. That's 25 years old. Okay, let me make it loose for you a bit. It's been on for a long time. Now it doesn't want to even come off. Ah, we'll get it off in the wash. Let's remove this crawfish from its shell. We need something a bit skinnier. Whoa, that definitely is not my hair. I think I should have washed this first. This is the edible part, now that we've got the shell off. You can see these cracks here, which I'm gonna attempt to repair. And I'll just do the same for the other side. So 
some vintage arm cheese there. So we'll get all that in the wash. Okay, so the tile is out. The washer as well, so we don't lose it. Oh, there's two washers there. But this is a 5M42A6 joule. Ooh. First, I want to just try and change that capacitor and see if that's the issue. TC920S. Let's see if I have any of that in stock. I doubt it. So I have a lot of these in stock, which are MT920, but I don't have any of these TC920s in stock. After doing a little bit of ugly googly, I think this is a replacement for this. So we'll try this one out. Oh, look at that, it found itself. So you get to get in there. Let's check. Give it a few wines. Feels a bit rough. Feels like something's jamming somewhere. We should peer a pulse now. Oh, there we go. We can also test it with our seconds hand. Seconds hand as well. Oh, there you go. Working. Shall we put it back together or shall we strip it and service it? Yeah, let's strip it. Okay, let's strip it. And the reason why I think it feels a bit groggy, you see that jewel there? Oh, pivot in that jewel appears and disappears by the looks of it, so it might be broken. I don't know, maybe it's just me. Well, well, we'll strip it anyway and have a look. So the Kinetic is basically a crossbreed between a quartz movement and an automatic. The quartz movement has a capacitor which is constantly being recharged by the movement of your wrist via an automatic style oscillating weight. Expect a lot of plastic parts. This type of movement was designed to be eco-friendly, provide high accuracy of quartz movements and also provide long lasting convenience to the user, i.e. no need for any sun, battery changes or even regular expensive servicing like mechanical watches. Okay, so this screw is just spinning and spinning and doesn't want to come out. Stud itself is just spinning. So I'll have to try and wedge that in somehow. Push that stud in a bit more and try and wedge it against the plastic and see if that works. Yeah, I think that's working cover should come off like so come on don't be shy okay so there's the Ryzen thread ripper processor make sure the screwdriver doesn't slip onto that coil Remember when I was telling you guys that I couldn't see a pivot through that jewel? So you can see the pivot has actually broken off. And this is probably one of the most common faults on these because this generating rotor gets a lot of heavy use. And instead of ordering another one, I have in my box of junk this water damaged kinetic. This movement that I'm working on is a 5M42A. And this one is a 5M62A. So let's see if it's compatible. Straight away, I can see this the pivot clearly on this one showing through. So this one feels a lot more smoother when it's rotating. Some water damage here. So it looks like the water entered the crown. But hopefully that part should be okay that we need. And if we can't, then I'll have to order a new one. There it is. Come on. Ooh. Oh. The damaged pivot on that one. Look at this little fella here. Is that the book that went in your mouth? Yeah. <laughs> He's back. He wants to be my new apprentice. But I'm already. Yeah, you're fired. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> There's a little bug again. He doesn't even care. Hmm? This little 
bug that came through the window. He's like, whatever. Mm, the setting lever, and that looks like a bolt on. Okay, so there's all the parts. And there's that little fella here. Okay, we'll make a watchmaker out of him. <laughs> He's climbing on the coils. Oh yeah? Come on then. <laughs> He's not even bothered. He's a millennial. Surprisingly, there isn't much plastic apart from that. And obviously the main plate on this bridge here, everything else is metal. We'll just give these a little clean manually. The charging rotor, the step rotor will clean by hand. Oh, there we go. Parts washed here. You can see here the Seiko logo is actually very lightly laser etched on. So somehow I'm going to have to try and do that section without losing that branding on there. Where's Trouble? He wanted to peel this. I'll do it myself. Oh, look at that. Brand new. All the arm cheese has been removed. Okay, Mr. Trouble, let's get you all mic'd up. Are you ready? Mm. Okay. Yeah. You cut your nails? I cut them like when I did a shower. <laughs> As you guys can see, this case is slightly curved. So that's why I'm using this stitch muff here. Just to get rid of all those scratches like this first. Pretty deep here. So we might need to go on the felt wheel with this part. Nearly there. Let's give you guys a look nearly there just a little bit more you can still see just a little bit here just there some serious marks here so again we'll use the felt wheel to keep that profile here and then we can work on the lugs as well the lugs are curved however it has this defined squarish profile and those marks are right on the edge where the side and the log meets. Tricky place. And we might just have to leave that little one there right on the angle. But we've got the rest of them out. So we might just have to leave that one in. So I've got a, a rounded edge on my wheel here, which I can use to do these little nooks and crannies. As you can see, this whole thing is quite a, an odd looking shape. So... So I'm just charging up the edges of the wheel here. Then I'll just use the edges. On this part of the lug, you can see all that missing metal here. It would be unwise to try and get that out, otherwise you'll end up 
removing all of this here to get it to that level so it'll just be wise just to leave that alone i think the whole corner is missing maybe i'll do another video where i show you guys how to laser weld this stuff to add more metal but on this one we'll just leave that bit as it is just heat tape up that logo and then polish the surrounding area and see if we can save that logo it's laser etched in but it seems like it's almost gone it'd be a shame to lose it see how the Seiko logo still has all those scratches all around it got rid of all the marks so when I straight grain all of it, it should all blend in now we'll do these links individually a bit tricky to hold on to so I have this piece of wood here uh, oh, we do my Jenga piece. a Jenga piece oh yeah miss ago tough luck I'm using it I've just pushed it down just to make a, a couple of dents and then I'll hollow these out so we've got something to hold these pieces while we polish. Hello, Jim. Can I have my link back, please? Go and listen to your song. Head, shoulders, cheese and toast, cheese and toast. It's quite sturdy. Hey! Oh, so you can see that's quite sturdy. He's just upset because I used his book for the wood shavings. And if you want, you can even put a bit of tape over this part here, which will be hidden anyway and doesn't need polishing. Miss a go. Just to keep it in place. But you can do without that bit of tape because it's quite sturdy in there. I'll move it onto the other side, onto the stitch mark. Make sure everything's nice and round and that there are no flat spots from the stiff felt wheel. Like so. Let's have a look at it now. It's still got its curved shape. There are no flat spots. But I have all these to do, so let's crack on with those. So here you can see I don't even need any tape. And it's still fine. Move it onto the other side. And it's absolutely fine without any tape. Let's give you guys another look at the severity and condition of these links. Hey, you want your Jenga piece back? No, because it's a mess! <laughs> Polished it is. We've got rid of all the scratches. And now I'll apply that straight grain finish. Shiny, shiny, shiny. Not shiny, not shiny. And that's it. Just went over it once. You can just about see it. So I think we'll leave it at that. Get it in there. Are you ready? Yep. So that's the straight grain on the case. Screw heads are a little bit chewed up. Power reserve indicating pusher. Much better. Now I wouldn't usually repair plastic, but since this watch has this exoskeleton type setup, I'm going to try and strengthen those cracks so they don't expand any further. I thoroughly clean the cracks with some solvent and then I'm using this two part plastic glue. The cracks are very awkward so it's hard not to make a mess but this can all be cleaned up once dry. The 
if I bend it back you can see that we've all we're trying to do is basically stop it from expanding any further and obviously the metal links will support it these once it's fully cured what I'll do is I'll give that a bit of a polish and get rid of all these surface marks here see if I bend it it's holding um, especially on the edge here we don't want it to spread any further so at least that will stop that from happening here it is you have a look at the screenshot there is a an image of this uh, this actual model the Seiko Museum and this bit you can see is still mirrored so I've left that bit with all the links we've managed to keep the logo and there's that side there That's the original glass and it's domed at the top and flat at the bottom but I don't have one of these in stock and I've ordered a replacement but in the meantime I have this one domed at the bottom and domed at the top but it's the same thickness so I'll use that one for now got the gasket already back in I'll just push that in and finish it off on the press but it looks quite nice like that tag yeah i think we should strip that one next yeah, this one sort of blocked and then this one you see the light shining through Whoa. shining through now we can see the light through it Grind. some dirt and grease <laughs> Look at that. That's come off. Look, what are you on about? Look, look, hmm? yeah, look here, look here. Let's have a look. <laughs> so what's this then? A turquoise. And look. Shall we strip this one down? Next. Whoa. And look, Google Play. Okay, yeah, you can have that. Goof around with it for a bit. Look, it has Play Store. Shall we use it? You have to sign up. You have to sign up. We ain't got time for this. Ain't nobody got time for this. Oh no, there's one stuck. We get the center wheel and pinion in first. Coming home. So that's the rotor stator in using some non-magnetic tweezers, some titanium ones. Now we can get this yoke in. Maybe. I think this setting wheel has to be the other way around. Let's get this switch lever on. There's a mini wheel in here. Now we can get the fifth wheel and pinion in, third wheel and pinion, the pinion facing down, the fourth wheel and pinion, capacitor connector in, train wheel setting lever, in goes the coil block, screw in here, just to hold that down, let's get that generating stator in now we can put our replacement generating rotor in now we can get that generating coil block in it's oscillating weight bridge for now now we can get this circuit block in just here 
put that here. One here. We'll get that on. Give it a little bit of a wind. And you can hear straight away, it's ticking away. Hey! They jump panties to just line up with those. This day character wheel here, even though we don't have a day, day this good. We have the final piece. Now if you had a, a day wheel on this, the day wheel would go on top of this. We don't have a day wheel on this particular version. You can see changes over. You can see everything is moving nice and free. So I'm nearly done here folks. Kintaro Hattori started the Seiko watch company back in 1881, but he may have not envisioned the effect it would have on the world of horology. Timekeeping was a luxury only available to the rich and famous back in those days, and companies over the years such as Timex and Ingersoll try to offer more affordable watches for the masses, albeit in an inferior, less accurate form than the hegemony of the Swiss watch industry. But it was Seiko and its quartz watches that changed the game forever and made accurate timekeeping really affordable for the masses. So hats off to Mr. Hattori and the Seiko Time Corp. So I hope you guys have enjoyed and found this one useful. If you did, then please like it, share it and subscribe to it. What else shall I say? Oh, and check out the merchandise store for some t-shirts. What? Oh, say they're cool and well designed t-shirts? But that's false advertising. Oh, and check out the merchandise store for some unique t-shirts. I'm getting quite good at this shameless marketing science. No? No? No. Okay. And look after yourselves, folks. And look after one another. Peace, love, and blessings to you all. And if the Almighty wills, I'll see you on the next one. Tarara bit.